Judge. Adjudicate. Punish. Execute. Discipline. These five words of power are used to define the judges, the Banu Hakim. Or do they actually? I am your law and savior, and this is the bloody guide to vampire roleplay. These vampires are descended from the antediluvian Hakim, whose goal in life and those of his descendants, the Banu Hakim, or the Asimites, is to punish the guilty and treacherous children of Cain who abuse and mistreat their powers. They would quickly become feared diablerists, taking said power from their foes by force as medieval Cainites and crusaders threatened their Middle Eastern homelands. So feared they were that the Tremere of the then new Camarilla placed a blood curse on them that would be broken some 400 years later, when the powerful blood sorcerer and child of Hakim, Earl Shogi, would awake from his ancient torpor and perform some hocus pocus shit. In the modern 20th anniversary and 5th edition nights, the Asimites, now mostly known as the Banu Hakim, depart from the safety of their hidden fortress Alamut and ally themselves with the Camarilla, partially filling in the void left by the violent gang Grail and Bruja, as well as providing additional access to blood sorcery within the Ivory Tower, much to the of their ancient foes, the Tremere. The Banu Hakim were amongst some of the most deadly kindred in the world of darkness, but they are also some of the most diverse and therefore difficult to approach during roleplay. Many people may be put off by their origins, just um, the perspective of wanting to portray their stereotypically mortal faiths respectively. Many of the clan are of Islamic faith, especially those who align themselves with the Ashira, the Islamic sect of vampires that ally themselves with the Camarilla. The Banu Hakim means sons of Hakim, which is why they are called this in V5. Asamite is very much a western kindred name, and this isn't a V5 thing either. The Asamites always preferred the term children of Hakim and the Ashira were very much a prominent feature in older versions of Vampire 2. Their entry into the Camarilla also began in Beckett's Jihad Diary, but was kind of hinted in Revised Edition. Now, whilst I'm not going to discuss who and how the Ashira operate, as I already discussed that on a previous episode, nor am I going to give a lecture on Islamic faith because, quite frankly, you don't need to be studied or learn Islam to feel an authentic member of the Clan of the Hunt. India and many of the African countries are filled with the Banu Hakim, as well as those European ones and, of course, America. They, the Banu Hakim, were just one of the last ones to diversify when it came to those who when they choose to embrace. The higher the generation, the younger they are, and the more varied their ethnicity, especially if you are an Anarch, which is often the result of the clan's archaic principles simply failing to function well. Anarch Banu Hakim tend to be apolitical, having seen enough of politics amid the clan's own schism and return of the aged members of the clan, who have harshly criticised the direction of the clan. That does not make these Anarchs cowards, as they are still just as fierce righteous kindred, still following the laws of Hakim, just with a freer and different focus. Banu Hakim Anarchs are among the strongest supporters of the Anarchs, since they truly want a change to affect kindred society. Unlike many of their modern brothers in arms, they have seen the alternative. But what about these older fans or the curiously new who wish to see what it was like to be a Legacy Edition Asimite within the V5 boundaries? Well, Forbidden Religions, one of the Cot of the Blood God stretch goal books, reintroduced the traditional Asimite mindset with the Shepherds of Ol Shagi cult, so you two can follow of those blood laws and the laws of Akim as originally intended, devoting to Ol Shogi, without any concern about whether your Banu Hakim should be Islamic. Just make sure that you, the player, don't make your Banu Hakim intrusive to the rest of the group. No one likes a moody murder hobo. To that end, clothing for most children of Hakim is simple and functional, so as not to get in the way of fighting, running, or whatever becomes the order of the night. On the topic of murder hobos, let us touch upon the application of Diablery, as they are not freshly embraced about that don't know any better. The Asimites are judges of kindred and kind, as decided, or do I say, destined, by Hakim and Cain, who placed that task upon Hakim. 
The world may have changed, but the kindred haven't really, so these ancient practices, from the perspective of the Banu Hakim, do not need to change. They feed on those unworthy of the blood in their veins. It is a sacred punishment whose demise is strength the judge. The ways they go about doing this are just as varied as them, but every feeding, for lack of a better phrase, is sacred, so blood is not taken lightly, especially for the Banu Hakim. Now, this is complicated somewhat by their bane of getting addicted to vampire blood, which also adds to the overall themes of discipline and restraint of their act, whilst the compulsion, in my opinion, trivializes it. As for their alternate bane found in the player's guide, not gonna cover up because that's just fucking stupid. The things that most people will tell you about the Banu Hakim is that they are assassins and fulfill their contracts for the highest bidder. Instead of money, they get blood for themselves and alumat. Yes, this is true, and their disciplines match this, but that is where a lot of diversity of the Banu Hakim comes in what I think is overlooked and ultimately forgotten. The Banu Hakim has always had a caste system, so each Azamite could better fit into an assigned role. V5 tends to mention two of these, the Warrior and the Vizier caste, but there is also the source of a caste. Viziers, in this instance, are scholars. In V5, this has no mechanical benefit, as it would do in previous editions of Vampire. Neither does it have any additional flaws, thank goodness. The casts are more contextual flavour, depending on the character concept, which I feel is just as freeing as it is annoying, but that is the purest within me talking. Like with all vampire clans, the Banu Hakim have access to three disciplines. Celerity, Obfuscate, Blood Sorcery, and to the accompanying rituals. Celerity allows them to pursue their targets, act on instinct when it matters, and the book when it goes tits up. There are more physically inclined characters may wish to invest points here. Obfuscate allows one to stalk the prey you hunt, shadowing your target to get the drop on them, which makes this the perfect blood-based power for assassins, but those who know the importance of taking their time as well. There are also those that do not wish to kill, but to learn, hiding in a corner, listening and observing, and sneaking out with the goods when no one is watching. Blood sorcery, however, has many uses, which is very much depending on the character you wish to make. Are you more of a scholar who wants to understand Use it to deliver devastating damage. Stand into the rituals and wards of this ancient clan, or is it just a flashy tool when fiends are tight? Sure, there are only a handful of wards and select few blood sorcery powers in V5, which are steadily growing, but the concept you create will view these things differently. Vizier and Sorcerer overlap in some senses, but one is more proactive than the other. So we have established that the Banu Hakim can fulfill more than one well-established assassin role. Anyone who upholds, interprets and acts upon laws and contracts will do, which covers both the martial and the political, depending on the cast in question, as well as the moral good and bad. The Ashira is strongest in Saudi Arabia, Iran and Afghanistan, though it has some influence in Egypt as well, so it would mean they and the Banu Hakim, who are the implied rulers of the Ashira now, are just as as capable as any venture to rule in these areas. Post embrace, the rules change, no longer bound by the laws of humans but by the decree of your god, whether it is Al Shagi or Hakim himself, assuming you don't join a cult and worship something else. How do you cope with that or justify your cold judgement? That is not to say that all Banu Hakim are noble, far from it. Well, contract killers are cannibalistic cults warrant the title of noble, but the judgement, pun intended, is somewhat askewed. Amongst the clan are actual criminals who could be fashioned into the Bahakim way of thinking, or discharged soldiers wanted to find redemption, now have an eternity to find it, if that is indeed what they want, assuming they are not a crazy gun nut rushing into the next kill or drinking something. That said, such people don't tend to last within the clan. There are also plenty of bookworms and occultists that are embraced by the Asamites. So with this wide range of functions, there are many ways you can bend predator types to fit your kindred concepts, but here is what I would suggest. 
most common for the Banu Hakim is going to be the Alley Cat and Blood Leech. Alley Cat has no real preference on who what you can feed, which is pretty important for somebody who is on the move a lot, but does require a bit of a struggle which is to be expected from a clan known to get hands on. Blood Leech also makes sense, if you want to explore the relationship one may have with Diablerie and the effects it would have on your principles, humanity and shifting judgments as is what is acceptable will mirror this. Mechanically, both of these possess celerity and reflect the distant humanity found within the Banu Hakim. The more morally bound Asamite may justify the lack of interaction found through sleeping prey via the Sandman predator type, a less sinful approach. An additional dot in Obfuscate can be found here too, which is perfect for sneaking and becoming the master of disguises. Meanwhile, some assassins in media use their sex appeal to throw off the weak willed, making the Siren Predator type an unexpected yet interesting fit of awarding the character appropriate line specialties to their character sheet. Another tricky one is the extortionist predator type from Cult of the Blood Gods, tying in the contract fulfilling element to feeding. On the topic of cults, Osiris is just what you need to indoctrinate the foolish mortals into your faith. That, and you get some blood sorcery from it. Something that is also keeping in mind is the many predator types that give you contacts and resources, which are appropriate for any assassin or scholar, so you have the means to find someone or something, regardless of sect. Banu Hakim are solitary kindred, so any haven they will have will probably be far away from their country and life in general for the sake of their targets and the Asamite's own sanity. The skills should reflect this too, with anything geared towards combat and hunting from martial Banu Hakim and arcane pursuits for scholars. Investigation and awareness are must-haves for any Banu Hakim you create. There are many lore sheets you can assign to your character, but here's some of the ones I think will fit with tonight's clan. From the core book, you may want to add low clan if prestige or the lack of thereof is a consideration for your chronicle. From the Anarch book, there is Anarch Revolt, as the Asamites are one of the key players for kicking things off. Perhaps your character knows something about it or how to orchestrate another one. From the Camerilla book, there is the Hand of Vengeance, Fatimir al Kraki, the legendary 6th generation Asamite of the Warrior cast. Many of the character based lore sheets work well because of the contact nature of the Banu Hakim. You may wish to run into them or have them get in touch with you for reasons. On similar notes, you have Justicar Lucind and Ancient Justicar Par from Fall of London and Chicago Folios respectively, both focusing on the more combat heavy Asamites or ones that are willing to get their hands dirty. Similarly, Archons from Chicago Folios makes you both very important and ready for combat. And on those notes, both for combat and Chicago, both the Anubi from Let the Streets Run Red and Lupine Expert from Chicago by Night encourage the player to fight, engage and study well. So if you want the children of Hakim to go toe to toe with the children of Gaia and other Guru, you have to use your uber violence there. If kindred on kindred violence is more your thing, try monomancy, I mean kindred dueling from Chicago Folios. Not my joke but my sabbat loving girlfriend, so hot so dangerous. But I digress. If you like the idea of delivering contraband and cargo but I'm not so keen on fighting, perhaps the Pony Express from Chicago Folios is best for you. For even more reinforcement, for those Banner Hakim who are more focused on their studies than field duty, I would recommend Occult Artifacts from Chicago Folios and half of the Blood Sigil lore sheets, Veins of the Earth and Vienna Zero. The only lore sheet exclusive to the Banu Hakim as of the writing of this guide is Descendant of Al Sharid, who also comes from Blood Sigils, putting you that bit closer to Al Shagi. There are many ways one can build a character. Some of them are wrong, but most of them are right. Ultimately, it should be the narrative that drives the stats, powers and mechanics that work with and against them. These are just my takes and mine alone. How would you build a character belonging to this vampire clan? What wouldn't you do? What would you add to shake things up and make the concept a little bit spicy? Let me know in the comments below. To be kept updated, follow the Lord by Night, VTM, Instagram and Blue Sky pages to find out when we upload each episode. You can also find out by subscribing to the YouTube channel and clicking on the little bell as you'll be immediately notified when the latest episode is live. Until next time, farewell.